The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Today's webinar, an introduction to RayViz, will be starting very shortly here. Our presenter today is Mr. Dave Jacobson. He's our senior application engineer. And I'm your moderator. This is Mike Govin. I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing for Lambda. Okay. Oh, thanks, Mike. Um, I guess I'll take over from here then. Um, the format for today's webinar, it's going to be a 25 to 30 minute presentation, maybe a little bit shorter than that. And we'll follow that up with a question and answer session. Uh, at any time during the webinar, please feel free to submit questions using the question box in the GoToWebinar control panel. And we'll address all questions at the end of the webinar. And I'll try to remember to remind everybody about the questions as we go along. Uh, also note that we are recording this webinar and we will be putting an archive version of it on our website uh, within the next day or so. So you'll be able to go back to this in the future and look at it again or anybody that's missed it will be able to re listen and watch as well. Uh, before we get started, just a, a couple uh, quick items here. Uh, anybody looking for additional resources with regards to TracePro? Uh, we do have TracePro webinars. All of the archive versions of our webinars are here. Uh, we do have tutorial videos as well as printed tutorials that you can download and print uh, for different aspects of TracePro. And you can also find information on our upcoming TracePro training classes on our website. Uh, on that note, our next two training classes are, we have a training class next month here in Littleton, Massachusetts. We have a two-day introduction to TracePro course on June 20th and 21st, a two-day course in optimization with TracePro on the 22nd and 23rd of June, and then finally a day of stray light analysis using TracePro on June 24th. Uh, this fall, we'll be having training at KU Leuven in Ghent, Belgium, and very similar. We're going to do a two-day introduction to TracePro uh, course September 13th and 14th, and then a two-day optimization uh, with TracePro course September 15th and 16th. Anybody interested in any of those courses, uh, please contest, contact us here uh, at sales at lambdares.com or check it out on our website, and we hope to see some folks there. Uh, to let everybody know, the, the current release of TracePro is TracePro 7.7.2. Uh, it was released April 1st, 2016. And we also have TracePro 7.8 available as early access. So this is the, the beta release of the program that people can download and test. It'll install alongside of your current version of TracePro, so it will not overwrite TracePro 7.7.2. Um, and we, we ask you know, anybody that's current users, you're welcome to download uh, these newer versions and give them a try. So with that, let's start today's webinar. Uh, the topic, as Mike mentioned, we're going to give you an introduction to RayViz. Uh, RayViz is our new software program that we're, we're starting to roll out now. The agenda for today, we're going to do a quick introduction. I'll do a quick overview of the interface, the RayViz interface in SolidWorks. And then I'm going to do a live demo. And during the demo, we'll look at applying TracePro material and surface properties to the model in SolidWorks. Adding, oh, just realized my slides weren't full screen. Sorry about that. Um, we'll look at applying trace pro material and surface properties to the model in SolidWorks. Adding a surface source property as a light source in the model. Running the ray trace in SolidWorks and displaying the rays. Adjusting the ray trace settings. And then exporting a model from SolidWorks for additional analysis in TracePro. And again, we'll wrap it up with a question and answer session at the end. So please feel free as we're going along, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to use the, the question box in the GoToWebinar control panel. Okay, just a couple screenshots here to get started. Some different things in showing ray tracing in SolidWorks using RayViz. A uh, light, couple light guide examples here, a uh, little desk lamp or luminaire example, a lens, and a a simple refracting telescope. We'll look at this telescope example a little bit more as we go along and get into the live demo. 
So what is Rayviz? Rayviz is an add-in for SolidWorks that allows the user to trace rays and visualize them in SolidWorks. If anybody has experience with our previous TracePro bridge for SolidWorks, all of that capability is is in Rayviz. So the ability to pl apply properties, save them as part of the SolidWorks model, and export a, a TracePro model for analysis in TracePro, that capability is, is also in Rayviz. But what Rayviz does is it now gives you the ability to run ray traces directly in SOLIDWORKS. So going down the next line here, we can apply optical properties using the, the TracePro property database directly in the SOLIDWORKS model. You can then run the ray trace in SOLIDWORKS and see the ray paths. The ray tracing functionality is the same as TracePro LC. So there, there's some capabilities, things like fluorescence and birefringence and thin film coatings that are not going to ray trace at this point in uh, the TracePro Bridge or SolidWorks. I'm sorry, in Rayviz. Uh, but scattering and ray splitting is modeled. Uh, from Rayviz, you can then export a TracePro model from SolidWorks for additional analysis in TracePro. And then this, the last note is that it requires SolidWorks 2011 or newer. So before we get to a demo, I'll give you a quick tour of the Rayviz interface. Here we have SolidWorks. This is SolidWorks 2016. I have a model open in this case, a telescope with some rays traced. When you install Rayviz, and it installs in SolidWorks as an add-in, uh, one thing it will do is it will add a Rayviz icon here into the model tree section of SolidWorks. It'll add a tab here for Rayviz. And when you click that tab, it'll open up and you'll see the, the Rayviz controls, apply properties, trace rays, display rays, and model options. If you were to click on model options, it lets you set the flux threshold. Uh, for people that are not TracePro users, the, the flux threshold is the point where the ray tracing stops keeping track of the rays. So in this case, the flux threshold is set to 0.05 or 5%. So once a ray has less than 5% of its initial flux, the ray trace engine will stop keeping track of it. And you can also set things here like the total intercepts. How many times can a ray hit different surfaces before it stopped keeping track of it? If you want to split periodic faces, so for example, if you exported a sphere, Instead of two surfaces on the outside of the sphere, it would have one surface. And then lastly, check for updates. Uh, this is checked by default. So now when you open up SolidWorks, it'll go and check to see if there's a new release of, of Rayviz and let you know and ask you if you want to download and install it. If you go to the Tools menu in SolidWorks up top here and then come down to Rayviz, you can see some additional uh, options here. Trace rays, display rays, refresh the system tree, update component properties, import, database, trace pro edition, check for updates about Rayviz, update license options, and customize. And I'm going to go through these here, so I read through them rather quickly. Yeah, they are just a little closer, larger view. But trace rays, Obviously, it traces the rays from the sources in the SOLIDWORKS model, displays rays, toggles the ray display on and off in the SOLIDWORKS model, refresh the system tree, can be used to refresh the system tree, update component properties. Uh, this is useful if you go into a, if you're making an assembly in SOLIDWORKS and the parts used in that assembly have TracePro properties. If you change the the trace pro properties on the parts, you can come in here and do update component properties to make sure you update the uh, update the assembly to use the properties newest properties applied to those parts used in the assembly. Import is used to import trace pro properties and add them to the trace pro property database. So if somebody sends you a new property, you can add it into the, the database here. Database it shows the location of the TracePro property database. 
Uh, by default, when you install Rayviz, it's going to install a new TracePro property database on your computer. And if you're not a TracePro user, this allows you to use Rayviz and you have that full property database to work with. Uh, if you're also a TracePro user and have TracePro on the same computer or working off a network license, say, and you have a database where you've added new custom properties over the years. But you can also use this database link to define the path to a different TracePro database. So just use that browse to where your current TracePro database is and you'll be able to use all those properties in Rayviz. And then TracePro Edition sets the addition of TracePro. And this controls the properties that can be applied in Rayviz. So for example, if you set the TracePro Edition to Expert, you'd be able to apply fluorescent properties in Rayviz, even though at this point they don't trace in Rayviz. But when you export that model to TracePro, those prop TracePro Expert, those properties will be available for use in TracePro Expert. Check for updates is used to check for new releases of Rayviz. About Rayviz shows the Rayviz release and license information. Uh, currently, Rayviz is running without a license, so it won't have any license information there. Similar to update license, which you can use to update the current Rayviz license. Options is the same as the options button you know, on the toolbars there. Sets the flux threshold, total intercepts, split periodic faces, and check for updates options. And then the customized menu lets you control which of these items are actually displayed when you open up this menu. So with that little tour of the interface, and, and you can see it, it's there's not a lot of um, extra features there. It's, it's what you need to work with. Uh, let's take a look at a, a live demo. And what we're going to try to do here in this live demo is we're going to look at applying TracePro material and surface properties to the model in SOLIDWORKS. We're going to add a surface source property to be used as the light source. We'll run the ray trace right in SOLIDWORKS and display the rays. We'll look at adjusting ray trace settings. And then lastly, we'll, we'll look at exporting the TracePro model from SOLIDWORKS for additional analysis in TracePro. And this is the model we're going to look at. So I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to go into SOLIDWORKS. And here's that model. Uh, this model was built partially in TracePro, partially in SOLIDWORKS combined together. The lens elements actually come from an Oslo model, which were then brought into TracePro and exported over to SOLIDWORKS. So it's a combination of, of several different programs. We can see here, here's the RayViz tab in the tree. I have the RayViz button here, which brings up apply properties, trace rays, display rays, model options. If I go up here to the tools menu, come down here, the RayViz, and here again, the options we just went through, trace rays, display rays, and so on. Uh, for example, if I wanted to change my database, I could click here. And right now it's pointing to my TracePro database as opposed to the, the database that's installed with RayViz but you can feel free to point it to any TracePro data property database that you want. Okay, so working with Rave is, is actually very similar to TracePro. Uh, here's my model tree. And right now this is in the Rave is tab. And I'm going to start off with applying some material properties. So I have lens one here, my front lens. And I'm just going to do a right click, choose material. And I'm going to, in the shot catalog, it's going to be shot BAK1. So I'm going to scroll down here, pick BAK1, click the green check mark. And if I expand this, here we see shot BAK1 is applied. I have a second lens here. And I'm going to, again, right click, go to material, under shot, again, this is shot FK54. There it is right there. Green check mark to apply it. And I can verify it right here. Okay. I have a CCD detector in this assembly. It's down here in the model. It's actually right here. I'm going to apply a perfect absorber property. That's going to be my target. So I'm going to right click, 
Now I'm going to choose Surface. And in the default catalog, I'm going to choose Perfect Absorber. And note, I mean, all the catalogs I have in my Trace Pro database are available here uh, for application. Go back and apply that again. And apply it. So I have a few other things I want to apply here. And what I'm going to do is, for most of the parts of the telescope, I'm going to give it a generic black paint property. So I'm just going to select multiple objects here. I'm going to select the first one, hold down the control key. So the retaining ring, lens cell, front tube, coupler, focus mount, rear tube, focusing tube, focuser, uh, CCD housing, and the dew shield, and the baffle. So I select all those objects, right click, go to surface, and again, in the default catalog, I'm going to choose black paint and apply that. And by applying it to the objects, I've actually, in effect, I've applied it to all the surfaces of each of those objects. So I was able to apply the property to multiple objects and multiple surfaces with just one selection. I could also come in my, my C window here, my CCD. Again, I could make a material property here. Let's just say it's shot BK7. Apply that. So now we have all of the material and surface properties applied. Uh, the last step is to set up a source. And here in my SOLIDWORKS model, I have a, a disk that I'm going to be used to represent my source. And I'm going to have rays coming from that and then going right into the into the telescope. So if I expand this, I've already in advance named the the front surface of this. This front surface, I've named it emitter. That's where I want my light to come from. So I'm going to right click, choose surface source, and my emission type, I'm going to pick flux. My units will be radiometric. I have one watt of flux, just as an example here. I'm going to keep the rays rel number of rays relatively small, just for the purposes of a demo. I'm going to trace 25 rays. For my angular distribution, I have an option of Lambertian, normal to the surface, surface absorptance, or uniform. I'm going to pick normal to the surface. So all my rays are going to come out at a right angle or th orthogonal to this surface in a collimated beam and I can set wavelengths. So I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to set a wavelength of 0 0.5 microns and then apply the property. And again, we can double check here. If I expand emitter, 1 watt, 25 rays, and we're all ready to go. So my next step, I can click trace rays. And it's going to trace 25 rays. We can see the lens, it's focusing down here on my detector. We can actually see here that we do have some reflected rays off this surface of this lens. So we're showing ray splitting and scattering here. So we could look at that and say, yep, I may, may want to look at ways of alleviating, alleviating that. I could apply a thin film coating, but then I'd need to export to Trace Pro to see the effects of that. But one thing we could do here is, for example, I have a baffle here. Let me zoom in a little bit here so I can grab it. I have a baffle, and I may want to figure out where do I want to place this baffle. And if I place it here, run the ray trace, everything looks good. But let's say I moved it up the front part of the tube. I can run this ray trace. Now I can see my baffle is is obscuring part of my beam. Also, I'm getting some scattering off it as well. And what we can look at is the, the ID of the baffle there is smaller than the beam at that point. So we could do some, some very quickly check to see that's not the best place for that baffle. We probably want it back here somewhere. So a very quick way of doing things like aperture checking, 
and making sure you're not blocking your beams in the uh, using this ray tracing in the uh, Rayvis. So right now we don't the analysis tools in Rayvis basically we can show you the rays where they're going so you can do ray path checking aperture checking and things like that. If you want to do a more detailed analysis the next step would be to actually export this model to TracePro. And I can do that very simply here by going to File, Save As. Let's rebuild and save. So I'm going to do a File, Save As. And because we have Rayviz installed, one of the options for the file types is a TracePro OML file. And I'm going to call this one, I'll use the same name as the webinar, the Refracting Telescope Morning Session, Morning Webinar. Save it. I got an error that popped up here. I saw that this morning. I'll pass it along to our programmers, but I can click OK just to get past that. And now if I come into TracePro, I can go to File, Open. Here's my, my OML file, my TracePro file right there. And there's the model. If I look at my properties, BAK1, supplied, lens 2 is FK54, and all my other properties as well are applied. So now in TracePro we could get a little bit further. We could start looking at running the ray tracing here. And let's just say we change my view to silhouettes. Similar results here. We see our ray scattering off the lens. We could look at lens, you know, if we wanted to then get into things like what's the irradiance on this detector. I could come to my CCD detector and find out which surface is the right one. There it is. So there's the rays hitting my source. And knowing I had a, I started with a one watt source, I have 0.8 watts here, so my system is about 80% efficient in focusing the light onto this detector. So using, using Rayviz, it gives you a very quick and easy way now to look at rays, the ray paths, in directly in SOLIDWORKS and it's not limited to a lens system such as this. You could look at light guides, luminaires, reflectors, things like that as well. So I'm going to go back to my notes here. We'll just start to wrap this up. So right now Rayviz is available as an early access program. Uh, so it's currently available as an early access release. Uh, inter interested users can sign up to download Ray download Rayviz and the Rayviz manual at this link here. Uh, also easy, just send us a note here at sales at lambdares.com. We can provide you with the link. No license code is required at this time. Um, that will obviously change when we do have the official release of Rayviz. Uh, each re release of Rayviz is going to time out approximately two weeks after it's released or if we have a new release available before that point uh, and what will happen is when you go to open SOLIDWORKS it'll prompt you that there's a new release of Rayviz available and you'll need to download that. Uh, we encourage users to try it out and to submit comments and suggestions to us here at sales at lambdares.com. We expect the official version of, of Rayviz will be released in about six to eight weeks. And users that are interested in purchasing Rayviz now can purchase the TracePro Bridge for SOLIDWORKS and then you'll be updated to the new Rayviz when it is released. So a little summary here and then we'll get to some questions and answers. And again, uh, anybody that does have questions, I see we have a few in the queue already, uh, please feel free to update or please feel free to submit questions using the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. So 
to summarize, uh, Rayviz, Rayviz brings TracePro's ray tracing and ray vis visualization capabilities to SolidWorks. Uh, SolidWorks users can see the rays traced directly in SolidWorks. You can apply TracePro optical properties using the TracePro property database directly in the SolidWorks model. You can shorten the design process considerably by verifying ray paths in SolidWorks. You can do things like aperture checking and mechanical interferences with the ray paths can be analyzed and checked directly in SolidWorks. You can then export TracePro models from SolidWorks for a full or more detailed analysis in TracePro. Uh, and again, you don't need TracePro to use Rayviz. If all you're looking to do is see ray paths and things like that, Rayviz is, is a good solution just for that. Uh, and then for more information or to sign up for a free 30-day trial of either the trial of Rayviz or a trial of TracePro, please visit us at www.lambdares.com. And again, our email is sales at lambdares.com. And our phone number here, it's in the U.S., is 978-486-0766. Uh, that concludes the presentation for this morning. Uh, I think we're going to have Mike come back on. We do have some questions to address here. And again, please feel free to submit any questions uh, that you may want. Or if you think of something after the webinar, please feel free to send us an email or give us a call. Well, Dave, thank you very much for putting this webinar together for us today. And I do see we have a, quite a few questions about the Rayviz product. Um, the first one. Uh, is a quick question. Does TracePro work with Solid Edge? Um, that's not really a Rayviz question, but uh, yes, well, TracePro can, Rayviz will not work with Solid Edge. Uh, Rayviz will only work with, uh, with SolidWorks. If somebody's using Solid Edge and would like to work, bring their models into TracePro, I would suggest uh, SAT, STEP, or I just file formats. I believe Solid Edge can export SAT, and if that's the case, that would be my first choice. It's also, SAT is also called ACIS. But if that doesn't work, then you can use uh, STEP or I, just, just knowing that you would need a, um, the translators in TracePro to read those files. Our second question today, is Rayviz part of the TracePro SolidWorks bridge or a separate add-in? It's a new product. It takes the capabilities of the TracePro bridge and adds the ray tracing ability to it. So the TracePro bridge for SolidWorks is going away. Rayviz will be taking its place. Um, so I think at some point here, Mike, if I'm correct, so, uh, TracePro bridge will no longer be available for sale, right? It'll just be Rayviz. That is correct. So if you have the TracePro bridge right now, you will automatically get Rayviz. It supersedes it, and it has all the functionality of the TracePro bridge in the Rayviz product. Yeah. Let's ask another, uh, let's another question here. Uh, can you run, can't you run in shaded section display rather than pure wireframe in Rayviz? Sure. It's just the, the way I had the model set up, I could go to view display. And let's say shaded. It's just the rays weren't, I didn't set my transparency on my objects, so the rays were not, dis you can't see the rays going through. But yes, you can do it. It, it works in any, um, in any view mode in SOLIDWORKS. The, the next question is, do I need to have the bridge to run Rayviz? Um, no, uh, as we just mentioned, Rayviz will be replacing the bridge. So you do not need to have the bridge and fairly, fairly soon, or once Rayviz is released, the TracePro bridge for SOLIDWORKS will be going away. So if you're a, if you're a current TracePro bridge user, you'll be able to just migrate over, current TracePro Bridge user with maintenance and support, you'll be able to migrate over to Rayviz. You'll still have all the capabilities you had before with the SolidWorks Bridge, TracePro Bridge for SolidWorks, but now you'll add the ray tracing capabilities. The next question, Dave, is what limitations will I have when, if I don't have TracePro, but only have a SolidWorks license? Basically, your, your limitations are you, you do not have any of the analysis tools that you find in TracePro. Things like irradiance maps, candela plots, uh, photorealistic rendering, and things like that. You're going to be able to see the rays. You're going to be able to see scattering and blocking of rays, things like that. But, for example, if you're doing a light guide, you wouldn't be able to say for sure how much light is actually getting through the light guide from one end to the next. 
but you could see on that light guide where is light leaking out, where I have reflections and scattering and things like that. So you can make some sort of intuitive guesses, but in terms of the the really what's you need trace before we use those analysis tools. Uh, also for some of the more advanced ray tracing features, things like thin film coatings, fluorescence, uh, bulk scattering, uh, those are all going to require running ray traces in TracePro. But there's still you know, quite a bit you can do right here and just by visualizing the ray paths in RayViz. Dave, great answer. Um, we have another question from Rito. How much will a RayViz license cost? And if you don't mind, I'll, I'll answer that one. Yep. Um, Rito, if you ask your sales representative, uh, the, the we'll, you'll get a quote from us on this. But right now, we're running a special promotion. Uh, usually, we're going to be using the TracePro Bridge price list currently at this time. But the first 100 adopters of the program will receive a $500 off uh, until we release the product, the official release of the product. Uh, the next question is once again from Rito. Is it possible to import trace profiles into RayViz? Not as trace profiles, no. You could build the model in TracePro, export it as an SAT step or IGES file, and then read that into SOLIDWORKS. But uh, RayViz at this time does not read trace profiles. So it's a, it's a one-way interface between the two. Which very similar to the capabilities that we had with uh, the TracePro Bridge. Dave, the next question is, will RayViz detect all surfaces automatically and create the tree? Yes. Uh, I didn't show it here, but here's the, the SOLIDWORKS model. Uh, I didn't have to go in here and do any other work from that. Uh, these names came from the model that I brought into SOLIDWORKS in this case. But yes, you, it will create all the surfaces here. You don't need to manually add it unless you want to change the name of a surface or an object, which you can just come in here and click on it to open an editing window and you can, you can change a name. But no, you don't need to manually create the surfaces. We have another question. Can, will more advanced features be added to RayViz in the future? Yes. I believe that's the roadmap, if I'm correct, Mike. You might be in a better position to answer that uh, than I am, but I, I believe the plan is to to continually add more features in as we go along, uh, especially as we st start to see what people are, are really looking for. That's exactly correct. We're definitely going to be adding more features. And in fact, anyone who's an early adopter at this stage, we welcome your comments and requests for new features into the program. That's exactly what we're looking for. And we're trying to find out what you're trying to do in your workspace and see what your workflow is and then add those features into RayViz at this time. And our final question is from Alex uh, Axel. Do I have to pay an annual license fee for RayViz? I think I can answer that one as well. Yep. If you buy the program, it is a perpetual license. You own the program at this stage. And it comes with a, a few months of support as well with the product. But if you want to have the new capabilities, if you want to make sure that this product is up to date when SolidWorks 2017 comes out, we have a, support, a yearly support fee. And that's exactly what you're going to need to pay if you want to stay up to date with the product uh, and keep up to date with SolidWorks 2017 when you add it into that product. Yeah, that, that? No, I would just sort of reiterate that last comment that SolidWorks makes significant changes, it seems like, from year to year. So if, as Mike said, if you were to buy RayViz right now, you have RayViz 2016, there's no guarantee, or we can't guarantee it, obviously, that it's going to run on SolidWorks 2017 because we don't know what changes SolidWorks is going to make. When SolidWorks make those changes, right, we can come in and then add and make it work on the new, new version, and it'll work on all past versions. So really, you're, the, the, the idea there would be if, if you're continually upgrading your SOLIDWORKS license year to year, I think it, most likely you'd want to be upgrading your RayViz license and, and keeping current so that it's, we're always working with the current release of SOLIDWORKS. I had one more uh, question, Dave. Which yeah. training webinar would show me how to use RayViz? And I've got to feel it's this one, right? Right. This is our, this is our first RayViz webinar. I expect we'll have more RayViz webinars, especially as we add new capabilities to it. Uh, actually, it's a good point, too. If anybody wants to see some additional webinars, either on RayViz or other topics, 
please feel free to send in suggestions to, to us at, uh, at sales at Lambda Res. Uh, the goal of today's webinar was to really to try to show a, a quick overview of the capabilities and to walk through an example so that people can, can use this as a reference on how to get started and, and going forward, how do they actually do things, especially people that are not TracePro users. Uh, I think somebody that's a Trace Pro user can come in here and, and figure this out relatively quickly, but I think Rayviz is going to now bring that ray trace capabilities to people that are not necessarily Trace Pro users. It's going to expand that, that horizon of people that need to do ray tracing. So the, the main focus of today's video is to show a, a quick example of, of what, what Rayviz is and how to apply properties and, and run a ray trace. But I expect we'll have more in the future as well. And I just wanted to add that uh, we're going to have the RayViz in early access probably for the next six weeks. And this is going to allow us to have a few more updates of the product. So we work out a couple of the, the inaccuracies of the, of the product and maybe a few of the bugs. But at that point in time, we'll have the full licensing capability in the program. And anyone who's an early adopter will have that $500 off capability before we bring the, the full version and the full release out, probably in the, the late June or early July timeframe. Um, put one last quick call out for questions. Um, also, just re-mentioning re as well that uh, this webinar, has we've been recording it, so we will be archiving a version of this on our website for future use. So if anybody would like to come back and, and uh, we'll put the slides and the recording up. So there'll be a tutorial there we can use as Rave is. We have one final question, Dave. Uh, where do you set the scattering properties? And uh, perhaps we have the, uh, the, color, the, uh, the color set of properties available. It yeah. probably shows how to put, maybe put a, a white paint or something like that on one of the uh, surfaces. Well, they're, the scattering is set as part of the surface property, and I don't have a property editor here, so what I could look at, for example, I'm just going to go back to Trace Pro, and let's just say here, define surface properties, and I'm going to go to the paint catalog. And we'll pick just blue paint. Surface properties in Trace Pro allow you to define absorption, specular reflection, specular transmission, and then scattered reflection and scattered transmission. And the scattering terms are described by BRDF and BTDF, which is the bidirectional reflectance distribution function, and BTDF is the bidirectional transmittance distribution function. Uh, together they make up what's called BSDF, the bidirectional scatter distribution function. So here's a, an example of blue paint from the paint catalog in Trace Pro. This, and I'll show just applying that in, in Rayviz as well. But for example, here we see wavelength, and we have all of these parameters, the absorption, specular reflection, specular transmission, scattered reflection, scattered transmission, can vary as a function of temperature, wavelength, and incident angle. So here we see the scattering varying as a function of wavelength as well as the absorptance. So we can see when we, we're up here in higher wavelengths, 0.645 microns, we have nearly 100% absorption. As we go down lower into the blue, we have almost no absorption there, and it's all reflected scatter in this case. So the, the scattering is defined as part of the, the surface property. In this example, there's also reflections off the front lens, which are the Fresnel reflections due to the difference of index of refraction between this, this front glass element in the air. So we're modeling that. But if I wanted to apply a different surface property, let's just say the dew shield here. Again, it's right click, surface, and I could scroll down to paint, and let's say that blue paint. That's applied there. Click that. Now, if I was to ray trace at different wavelengths, I could look at light that's absorbed by that. You know, the blue blue wavelengths would be absorbed by that, or sorry, would be reflected by that. Other wavelengths would be absorbed, and it would also have the scattering based on that that profile that we just looked at. So, to really edit and make new properties, you would need to have Trace Pro, 
but if somebody sent you a property, you could import it here into the into Rayviz using tools, Rayviz, and then import. So if somebody sent you a new TracePro property, you can add it into your your Rayviz property database. Okay, and I think there was just one last question. Somebody's looking for a, a price and offer details in an email. So I think we can certainly send that out. Definitely can. Thank you very much for a very informative webinar, Dave. Thank you. And I, I think we can wrap it up. Yep. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you in future TracePro and Rayviz webinars. Good day.